We go now to the head of the NAACP, Derek Johnson, who joins us from Jackson, Mississippi. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. So the jury accepted Kyle Rittenhouse's uh, explanation that he was acting in, in self-defense. President Biden said, you know, this was disappointing in some ways, but the jury system works and we have to abide by it. You say the verdict itself was dangerous. You know, it's hard for African-Americans to reconcile what we witnessed in that trial. We have far too many individuals sitting in jail for crimes they didn't commit or overcharged for crimes that were committed. And here you have a 17-year-old who illegally purchased a gun, traveled across state lines to protect property that was not his for owners that who did not invite him, and he put himself in harm's way based on the rhetoric that he's seen on social media platforms. So it's hard to reconcile the verdict with the experience that many African Americans have faced over the uh, several decades. So this, this, this trial for us is a warning shot that vigilante justice is allowed in this country or in particular communities. Kyle Rittenhouse, as you know, has become this sort of icon for some within the conservative movement. Um, he was used back during the campaign by the by the then Biden campaign team in a campaign video um, that positioned him as a white supremacist. His mother said that was defamatory to him. The bottom line is this is being politicized. Um, and I'm wondering what you think the impact of that is. Well, the current political environment has allowed for this type of behavior. The prior administration has opened the door, and many individuals who operate under the banner of white supremacy have run through the door, whether it's Charlottesville or the, the killings in Pittsburgh at the synagogue or in Louisville. And unfortunately, until we have mature uh, politicians willing to stand up, regardless of political affiliations, and address the questions of mob violence, vigilantism, but more importantly, the underlying issue of race in this country, something we have never truly addressed. But there is no evidence of, of him being a white supremacist himself, correct? Well, it's not about the evidence of him being a white supremacist. It is about the, the position that individuals like him find themselves in where they think they have to go and protect property because of right. a peaceful protest, in some cases, of Black Lives Matter uh, organizing. Black Lives Matter is a value proposition. It's not, a orga it's not an organization in, in, in one sense. It's not about a hashtag. It's a value proposition that the lives of African Americans have been diminished and our lives matter. And when you have scenarios like what took place in Wisconsin that caused people to stand up with this police officer who, who paralyzed uh, another innocent individual, you have to begin to ask, we have to ask ourselves for questions. Do we yeah. value the lives of not only African Americans, but everyone? And what, mm -hmm. uh, what he did was take up the mantle because the political climate allowed for him to do that. We had a white supremacist in the White House and it opened the door to this floodgate of, of vigilante violence. And that's the real question here. I want to ask you about a lawsuit that the NAACP has. Um, you, along with Congressman Benny Thompson, are suing the former president uh, and Rudy Giuliani, his personal attorney, along with some extremist groups, alleging that they violated the Ku Klux Klan Act by, conspiracy, by conspiring, I should say, with white supremacists to incite the violence at the Capitol on January 6th. Uh, as you watch what's happening in Charlottesville, how do you think that that trial if it has any connection at all, um, will influence your case. You know, understanding the act was created after the Civil War had ended and you had members of Congress uh, uh, pursuing a course to carry out their sworn duty. And any time you have a disruption uh, from members of Congress from carrying out their sworn duty, that's a disruption and a violation of the act. And that's what we sued on. Congressman Thompson had to step down as the lead plaintiff. Uh, Barbara Lee is now the lead plaintiff. But when you witness what took place on January 6th, it falls squarely on what the, the framers of the act uh, intended, that mm -hmm. members of Congress, Senate or House members, should not be under any threat of intimidation, 
violence to, that would okay. prevent them from carrying out their duty. I want to witness what's taking place. At, go, go ahead. But, sorry, before I let you go, I want to quickly ask you about the current president. Um, his approval rating among black voters uh, has dipped. 65% approve, 35% disapprove, according to our latest polling. Do you believe President Biden's leading, living up to the promises he made to black voters? Still more work to do. I mean, he's, he's he delivered on many pro promises, but the key thing for many of my members and people I talk to is voting right protection. And it's the time for the city to do their job uh, uh, adopt voting right protections. The House have done their job. The city must do their job. The president must sign the bill. And I also believe that as we progress in this administration, that will be the true tale. We are within a year of the administration. A lot has been accomplished. There's still so much work yeah. to be done. But the number one issue is voting right protections for African Americans and for our democracy. Okay. We'll watch those issues. Thank you very much, Mr. Johnson, for your time. Don't go away.